Hey guys, it's MH Finn. Today's video is the story of XIV, also known as the Velocity Shares Daily Inverse VIX Short, a previously famous financial product with a story that left behind in its path a trail of greed, luck, and the unexpected. To begin this tale, we have to go back to 2008, back to the financial meltdown which devastated the market but ushered in a new decade that featured a period of continued stable growth. This turned out to be the start of a seemingly endless bull run that still continues to this day. In this period, many traders were drawn to a new set of financial products that became incredibly profitable. Inverse Volatility Shorts The most famous of these was known as the Velocity Shares Daily Inverse VIX Short, better known as XIV. It became the centerpiece of this new strategy sweeping the market. Described as an exchange-traded note that was created to give traders the chance to profit when volatility went down, the way it worked on its surface was rather simple. The calmer the market, the more profitable the product. Given the stabilization and continued growth of the market post-2010, the XIV became a legendary asset, a way of earning easy money. Traders flocked to its miracle-like performance. At one point, it had returned a 2200% profit in just five years. Like all bubbles, it drew the attention of the internet, spurring groups like Reddit's Trade XIV, where one member named Likana even claimed to have turned her initial 50k investment into nearly $4 million by simply trading the speculative product. Millions of investors were drawn into one of the most complicated products in the financial market, but very few actually understood the mechanics and dangers lurking under the hood. See, XIV was in simplistic terms an ETN that attempted to follow the inverse of the VIX. The VIX, on the other hand, was another financial product that attempted to measure market volatility. This simply meant that the XIV was meant to be profitable if the market was calm and stable. On the surface, this was easy to understand, but under the hood, it was much more complicated. To understand, let's get started with some simple facts. Officially named the Velocity Shares Daily Inverse VIX Short-Term Exchange Traded Note, XIV traded like a stock, meaning you can buy and sell it any time the market was open, including the pre-market and after-market time periods. In its peak, it averaged a daily volume of 29 million shares, making its liquidity excellent. Like a stock, XIV shares could be split or reverse split, and it could even be traded in your typical IRA. But unlike stocks, owning XIV did not give you a share of a corporation. There was no quarterly reports, no sales, no dividends, no earnings, and no profits or losses. To make it even more obscure, XIV wasn't even driven by its own supply and demand. So how did it work? Well that answer gets quite complex, but you can check out a really interesting Money Talks video on this topic if you're interested in the details. In my attempt of explaining, I'm going to condense down much of the information. To understand how the XIV works, you have to understand how it derives its value. And the way it does that is by tracking the inverse of another index called the S&P 500 VIX Short-Term Futures Index, which in itself manages a portfolio of two nearest to expiration VIX futures contracts. These two futures contracts essentially dictate the price of XIV, which in reality is just a really complicated way to say that XIV attempts to inverse market volatility. Now underneath the hood of this monster, things can get really, really complicated and go way beyond the scope of this video. The reason I'm using phrases such as attempts to inverse the VIX is because there are so many asterisks in this product they can cause things to go haywire. One of the biggest of these asterisks was printed in XIV's prospectus, which is sort of like a brochure of how things work, in that there is a specific section regarding an acceleration clause. Unfortunately for many casual investors, they failed to read this document nor understand the risk associated with this product. The acceleration clause stated if the VIX futures index that it tracks happened to go up 80% in one day, they can shut down the entire product. Now similar language can be found in many inverse volatility products, and the reason for that is rather simple. If the XIV tracks the inverse of these futures, and the futures go up to 110%, what's the inverse of that? It's quite possible that under an extreme event, the XIV could in theory hold negative value. The firms do not want this to happen and will do anything in their power to prevent it, including liquidating the entire product. Now the chances of this were rather small, but following Murphy's Law, you can almost guess what happens next. This of course is where the story takes a turn for the worst. 
On February 5th, 2018, the VIX futures, the XIV tracks, jumped 100%, doubling in one day. That afternoon, the note's price fell from $75.59 to $4.22 by 5.10 p.m., triggering the acceleration clause. The product was liquidated the next week, and thousands of investors who made a fortune on the product lost it overnight, including Reddit user Likana, who claimed she had lost $4 million, much of which belonged to close family and friends. She was even featured in a Marketplace article that described her experience. This story can act as a reminder to those trading complex products that I see are very popular among novice trading circles. Please understand the risk associated and read the prospectus. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and make sure you are clear on how the product derives its price. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. Thank you.